Hey guys, so we have a uh, ABS on and uh, traction light on. So as you can see right there, left front wheel bearing, oh my left, left front wheel speed sensor is not reading. C0035 is pertaining to the uh, left front wheel speed sensor. As you can see right there, it is not being at the front. As uh, I am driving right now. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the shop and uh, check the. Uh, Schematics and uh, check the ground uh, ground power. See if the uh, ground power has uh, has the connector. So uh, this is very common for the uh, wire harness to uh, to rub and break sometimes. So I'm going to show you the harness is uh, most commonly. Uh, rubbing and uh, the break point is usually at the uh, right around to go on so that's it all right so i'm gonna see you back in the shop by the way i also have this chat assistant for any car concern that you might have so this one is just a uh, beta right now i am working on and for example if you have a code p0300 then you can click on the P0300, it's going to show you what is the uh, code description and what is the potential cost and among other questions. So please try it out and uh, the link is down in the description. It will show you how to download this cool program right here. Alright guys, so here we are in the shop. So we're talking about uh, the front wheel speed sensor it is not reading. So make sure you raise your vehicle up with a check or you have a hoist that is um, awesome. So make sure your everything is uh, secure and be able to raise it up. And next you want to inspect the uh, wire. As you can see right there, that one is broken. Completely uh, break off the uh, wheel bearing is supposed to be like that as you compare to the right side so we're gonna replace the uh, the whole wheel bearing so you cannot uh, fix the uh, wire because it's a uh, brick flush with the sensor alongside with the uh, sensor integrated with the wheel bearing so you have to replace <coughs> The whole thing, the whole wheel, wheel, uh, wheel bearing. And right there, I hit the uh, bolt that holding the uh, uh, rotor. So I make it loose, make it uh, break all the dust, all the I mean, all the rust. So it's easy to uh, remove with that impact driver. Once the rotor is removed, then you want to remove the axle uh, nut. I believe this axle nut is uh, 36 or 38 mill millimeter. It's very so. Just make sure you have uh, the whole side uh, socket. The axle set, I mean axle nut uh, set socket. Look at that, it's so easy. Huh. Sometimes not that easy. So there are uh, three bolts 
holding the uh, wheel bearing hub on the back side right there as you can see and this side is uh, I think the 15 or yeah this is 15 uh, 15 millimeter um, socket So if you live in the um, uh, northern state, usually it can be very rusty. Sometimes you just have to torch it out. Oh, I mean heat it up, maybe not torch it out. You gotta heat the bolts up. Then eventually it's gonna break loose. So that is the final bolt that I have removed then you're gonna hammer a little bit tap sometimes it come out really easy sometimes it's not it, um, it also depends too so that steering knuckle is uh, aluminum and the uh, wheel bearing hub is uh, it's iron, so aluminum and iron is not going together too well. So as you can see right there, it's breaking flush at the uh, center. And one most important thing is always clean your uh, steering knuckle if you have any uh, corrosion around the uh, wheel bearing sitting. Just one tip so you don't grind it too much, okay? So just lightly uh, put some pressure on it so it uh, removes all the corrosion on the surface of that uh, wheel bearing sitting. And then next, you want to clean it up nice and clean. And um, either way, uh, you can use your uh, anti seat if you be a nice guy. If you're not, doesn't matter. So anti seize uh, I put the anti seize uh, along that uh, axle uh, shaft spline. It helps uh, from uh, seizing. As you can see right there, put some anti seize on there. Just make it easier for the next guy. You never know, the next guy might be you or somebody else as you can see right there it's a brand new wheel bearing hub and it comes with the uh, sensor so it's not as you can see right there that is where the sensor um, wire broke before and make sure you put your uh, backing plate on and I've seen some guy forgot would put the backing plate on after they uh, install the wheel bearing. It's a very common. So make sure you put your uh, backing plate on and secure all three bolts uh, from behind. Turn your steering knuckle to the other side, and that is your final bolt uh, insulation. So just remember, uh, there's always a uh, 
third bolt. So only three bolts that holding the uh, wheel bearing hub on for the uh, American made model. Then go install the brake rotor on and give it a little tap on that uh, bolt holding uh, holding the uh, rotor. Just a little tiny tap and you're gonna put your brake caliper back on. So the brake uh, caliper bolt is a 15 millimeter socket. Sometimes you just need to uh, wiggle that bolt to, uh, to properly seat it onto that uh, bracket steering knuckle. Make sure you uh, hand tight first, then uh, you're gonna use an impact or electric impact. So make sure you don't cross thread it. Cross threading is not fun. Um, it's horrible. Just take your time and take waste your time, and you have to fix it for uh, for your screwed up. So try to eliminate um, anything as possible, especially when you're breaking stuff or cross threading. Then make sure you put your hands uh, on that on just nug. Then you're gonna torque this thing down to um, depend on your manufacturer uh, recommendation for the torque spec. Make sure you use your torque wrench. Uh, don't use impact. As you can see right there, I use my torque wrench. Make sure it properly torque, and make sure it is clicking. Then you are done. And the final step is you're gonna put your wheel back on and go for a test drive. And make sure you erase the code for the ABS. So make sure everything is off and ready to go. And simple as that. And one last step, so make sure you put your connector back on. I have to admit, sometimes I do forget, so. Just making sure, just slow down and uh, making sure everything is properly um, installed, then back it out and go for a test drive. Okay guys, so as you see, um, I replaced the uh, left front wheel bearing and I have not erased the coat yet, so, and uh, there is no ABS light or traction light on, or track stabilizer, stabilized um, light are on, and um, now, we're gonna turn the key off and erase the code. Double code. We're gonna erase all the code. Uh, 
Alright, here you go. So, you go on. Put in dry. And uh, I'm just gonna drive this car around the parking lot. So, don't need to go uh, down the highway. As you can see right there, it is. Uh, that front wheel speed is reading on the scan tool. So that's it. That is it, you guys. So if you have a handheld scan tool, you can uh, do this one. If you have this uh, data available on your handheld scan tool, if not, it's gonna be difficult. But it, it depends. So. Alright guys, so that is all I have for you guys today and I hope you enjoyed the uh, little uh, tutorial how to diagnose the C0035 and uh, now we're gonna how the uh, process takes. Alright guys, so that is all I have for you guys today and Please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out to promote the channel. And I really appreciate that if you do that. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Alright, take care. Alright, Luke is out.